Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to see what happens when players play the prisoner's dilemma repeatedly. So here's a prisoner's dilemma. You can quickly verify that defect strictly dominates cooperate for both players. If player 2 were to cooperate, player 1 would want to defect as 5 is greater than 3. And if player 2 were to defect, player 1 would want to defect as well as 1 is greater than 0. So defect strictly dominates cooperate for player 1, and this is true for player 2 as well, but I will leave it up to you to verify that in case you don't believe me. But you should, because I'm telling you the truth. The Prisoner's Dilemma has been around longer than any other game in our field of study, and for a long time there was this theory that if you could play the Prisoner's Dilemma enough times in succession, that you might be able to sustain a cooperative equilibrium. So instead of everyone just always uh, defecting on each other every single time we played, we might be able to cooperate based off of past play and trust in one another that we would continue cooperation instead of uh, going for this temptation to defect. But like I said, this was just a theory. It was sort of an urban legend of game theory, uh, something that everyone thought was probably true, but no one could actually pin down why it was true. And this lasted for decades, where no one could verify this alleged um, concept of cooperation in a prisoner's dilemma. So in this video, we're going to look at what the problem was. And specifically, this is just the fact that we're playing a repeated prisoner's dilemma a finite number of times. And you'll see why this causes a problem in a moment. So suppose we play the prisoner's dilemma just twice. Um, you'll notice I changed this from being once to prisoner's dilemma round one, and then we're going to play prisoner's dilemma round two. Um, so we're here in round one. We'll choose our strategies, reveal them at the same time, obtain our payoff. So if we cooperated, we get three points apiece for the first period. If we both defected, we get one, one, and so forth. And then after that happens, we'll play the exact same game in round two. And We'll both choose our strategies, both reveal them at the same time, and get our payoffs like that. And we're trying to maximize our payoffs combined from round one and round two. So if we cooperated in round one and then defected on each other in round two, then we would get three plus one or four points total. And that works for all those combinations again as well. Um, what we want to do, or what we want to see, is if we can condition our behavior in round two based off of what happened in the last round. So what do I mean by that? Well, here's a suggestion. Both players make the following resolution to each other. They promise to cooperate in the first round, and in the second round, each player will cooperate with the other only if the other cooperated in the first round, sort of as a reward for cooperation in the first round. And this seems really good. If we played the defect-defect equilibrium both times, like we would in a one-shot prisoner's dilemma, just played twice, we would only get two points total. However, if we both cooperated twice, we would get 6 instead, and 6 is a lot better than 2. And also note, even if we just managed to cooperate in the first period, if we both played cooperate, cooperate um, in period 1, then we would get 3 points for just that first period, which by itself would be better than if we defected on each other twice. Um, so we defected each other in the first period and defected on each other in the second period. That would net us 1 point apiece for each period, or two points total, which is going to be worse than just if we can cooperate a single time. And so we really want to be able to establish this cooperate, cooperate, contingent trust on each other and obtain these better payoffs. The question is, can we actually do that? And unfortunately, there's a credibility issue here. If you recall back to our series of videos on subgame perfection, the link to the first of which is on your screen now, and you can follow that link through the rest of those lectures, we said that players can only make credible commitments, or commitments that they are willing to follow through on once they actually have to make those commitments. And while I haven't drawn out the extensive form of the repeated, repeated prisoner's dilemma, because there are just so many branches to draw for that in a two-period game, let alone um, a three or four or so forth number of times that we're playing, we can still use the same logic of subgame perfection um, in the problem that we're looking at currently, even though we don't have this extensive form drawing of it. It really doesn't matter. We just got to look at it like this. So here we are in, in round two, and imagine I made that cooperative promise, and I cooperated in round one, and so did you. Well, I've promised that I would cooperate again in round two to reward you for your cooperation in round one. But notice that it is no longer in my best interest to keep my promise. I already earned my good payoff for the first round, and I can't really go back in time, or you can't really go back in time and dock me points for breaking my promise here. Whatever we got in the first round is... It's done. We just have those payoffs and there's no changing them. We can only really now 
look at our round two payoffs and try to maximize what we're doing in round two, regardless of what happened in round one. And knowing that, we just have a regular old prisoner's dilemma here, and so I'm going to defect. It's just the reality of the situation, no matter how unfortunate it is. And alternatively, you might think of this as a problem with backward induction. Um, I should say it's not a problem of backward induction itself, but backward induction is what causes this problem. Backward induction says that we should solve sequential games by starting at the end and working our way backward. So the end of the game is round two, and here we are in round two. Round two is just a prisoner's dilemma, so we know that we're both going to defect here. And then if you move back a step, what is going to happen in round two is already set in stone. We know that we're going to be both defecting on each other in round two, and there's nothing that's going to change that. So because of that, we can't really play a cooperative conditional strategy. And as such, we have to just optimize what we would do in round one, um, pretty much ignoring uh, what's going to happen in round two. And that means we're going to defect. We're just going to be playing a regular old prisoner's dilemma again in round one. And the only equilibrium to that is to uh, have both players defect. And so we get this really bad outcome where we only have two rounds. We get defect, defect, and defect, defect as your strategies and your outcomes. And you might be thinking that this is only because we've only played two rounds. And we might be able to cooperate or sustain cooperation if we played more rounds than that. And I'm actually going to argue that that's not the case. I'm going to show you why right now. Let's consider an end round prisoner's dilemma. So we're going to be pl playing a set number of times. We know that number ahead of time. It is n, where n is any number greater than 1. And we're still going to use backward induction to solve this game. So we begin in the last period, which is round n, which is the number I have on the screen. And it doesn't matter uh, whether the last period is number 2, 12, or n, you're still going to have all the players defect. So player 1 is going to defect and player 2 is going to defect because whatever has already happened has already happened and there's no changing it. We can only maximize our utility for this current round and we can do that only by defection. So we both defect. And we're going to mark that here as what happens in round n. Now, if you go back another period, we're not going to be able to play a cooperative contingent strategy in the last round, so we both know that we're going to defect in the second to last round as a result of that. And now we know that we're not going to be able to play a cooperation contingent strategy in the last two rounds, so we can only rationally do one thing in the third to last round, or round n minus two, and that is to defect. And you can work through this logic all the way back to the first round. And eventually you just get defection everywhere. So in a finitely repeated prisoner's dilemma, a prisoner's dilemma of finite length, a finite number of rounds, the only equilibrium is defection in every round for both players. Does that mean cooperation is hopeless? Well, not quite. The reason you end up with defection in every period, period is because the game has a precise ending, which is round n, that both players know ahead of time and have to play around as a result. But what if the game never ended, or you weren't quite sure when it was going to end? As we will see in future videos, that can actually be sufficient for cooperation to occur in equilibrium. 